everyone to the co-creators convergence celebration of world unity week i'm noelle marshall and i'm one of the co-founders of the co-creators convergence and right now you are in the co-creators global village inside of world unity week so there's four different organizations that went together and we decided this is how we're going to celebrate we're going to bring the best of the best of folks that we know and um, that's how we arrived at our village inside a World Unity Week. But check out their, their offerings too, worldunityweek.org. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to my dear friend, buddy, pal, oh boy, co-creator. <laughs> I consider Kathy part, a, a, a co-founder of the Co-Creators Convergence. And she has brought our wonderful guest. We always have a good time with Joan of Angels. So without any further ado, I'm going to drop out of here and let the party begin. Thanks for coming, everyone. Well, we decided that Joan wanted to be a goddess, angel, we're in royalty, <laughs> right? So that we would both do this, although I don't think I can keep it on very long. So <laughs> hi, I'm Kathy Mason from Mason Works Marketing, and I'm here with my fun, dear friend, Joan of Angels, who actually is a doctor. So we have a doctor in the house. Um, <laughs> she was, she's a doctor of chiropractic and she has the energy of the divine coming through her that she shares so, so generously with others, helping them find their way and be aligned to their highest knowing. Um, Joan was um, doing chiropractic and then he had an accident and then got the instructions out of the blue to paint 24 angels and maybe, 33. What, how many? 33. Oh, 33, sorry, I thought it was 24. And, um, and they're portals of divine energy and she had never painted before. So hopefully she'll tell you about all these amazing magical things that keep happening to her because she's open to it. She's a portal for the divine energy. So thank you, Joan. I'm so glad to be with you. I can't wait to be with you in person, but anyway. Well, you know, I'm flying to Colorado in August, so we could talk a little bit about it separately, okay? Yeah, we should. Uh, but I want to say something, Kathy. We are wearing our crowns for several reasons. We're wearing our crowns because we're talking about love, which is the highest frequency in the entire galaxy, universe, meta-universe, and every dimensional frequency. And what better connects you to your crown and to the energy of love then, and your crown, I must say, is magnifique. <laughs> well, it was a gift from Tamara Oviet because, um, and she got one just like it. So we kind of have twin crowns, <laughs> but it, it's heavy. I don't know how the, how these queens do that. <laughs> I'll tell you exactly how they do that. It is a reminder to them of the weight that they carry. Oh. and the responsibility they carry. And also, I think it's kind of glued to their head. <laughs> Somehow, I have this feeling that there is a, a divine like microphone speaker, so they get direct instructions, because remember, they're supposed to be the divine ruler from God. So they have to have this. <laughs> Never mind, I'm being yeah, silly. <laughs> that's a little far for me, but that's a stretch. But uh, accessories are a girl's best friend. So we're okay. <laughs> so, and I have my wand. Oh, good. Okay. So Joan, um, uh, you you just came back from um, the disclosure event in LA, and you are regular on Portal to Ascension, and you have shows 
that you're so generous with um, with how you share and help people everywhere. Do you want to, wherever you want to start, please, please let me know how I can help you. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Kathy. Well, guys, I'm going to actually share my screen in just a minute, but I do want to introduce myself first where we're face to face and I don't have the, the slides up. I'm Joan of Angels. I was given this name. I didn't take it. But if I ever had to choose a name for myself, I would have said Joan of Arc or Joan of Arc Angel. So it was the most perfect name that was given to me. And why? Because my whole life I had felt that I was Joan of Arc. I would live and breathe Joan of Arc. I would live and breathe the, the heroic deeds she did and the bravery that she exhibited you know when she went to the king you know she was a peasant girl 14 years old <clears throat> you know i didn't have that kind of courage at 14 years old or if i did it probably i lost it in several lifetimes you know they they had that effect on us so i wanted to be joan of arc and that was my consciousness and even when i grew up i'll never forget having dinner one night with kevin ryerson who was shirley mclean's psychic and my friend Trisha McCann had said to Kevin, she said, well, some of us think that Joan here, it wasn't Joan of, of Angels yet, but she said, Joan here was Joan of Arc. What do you think? And Kevin said, well, what no one that we knows about Joan of Arc is that she literally believed in miracles. Everything about her was miracles. And then the hair on our arms stood up because I had just published my first book on miracles and on the Miracle Makers Club. And so that seemed to be very prophetic. <clears throat> We're here tonight. You're here in my in my sanctuary. You're here with my favorite animals on the planet. I love the giraffes. They embody the heart of compassion and the heart of love, really, when you see them together. And the thing about the giraffes is that they're the only animal on the planet, including humans, that can see 360 degrees all around. So they have complete, universal, full sight at all times they can turn that head around and they are the only animal that can cry real tears except for humanity and so they deserve our love our protection and they have a lot to say to us and when i lived in my house in marin i had something like 48 giraffe symbols in my living room that's how much i felt their presence so yes, I'm Joan of Angels. I'm an intuitive guide for people. I started off my life as a chiropractor and my job as a chiropractor was to turn on your power because I was an old school chiropractor and I believed in literally adjusting your first two bones of your neck, which would connect you with innate intelligence, that infinite innate intelligence was source. So my job from, from my 20s on was to turn on people's power to connect them with their source so that divine healing could come through from the crown from that connection once you turn on that connection and so they could feel the energy of of who they were so i would say several things i would you know your power's on i would say we're aligning your body mind and spirit so you can do your mission and what you know what you're here to do and so you can leap out of tall buildings in a single bound, faster than a speeding bullet. And those were the things I'd say to my patients. And the funniest part about it is that those are the things I say to my clients now, that I'm gonna help you turn up your power. I'm gonna help you turn on that connection to source so you can hear the voice of the divine, so you can hear the messages that are constantly being sent to you 24 seven. Now, the messages are constantly being sent to you, but are your systems open to hear those messages? So I'm here tonight to talk to you about experiencing love, turning on that love, that love switch in our body, maybe doing some healing of our heart so that we can experience even more love. Now, is there such a thing as too much love? No. No, you can love as much as your heart and your spirit can hold you could sometimes experience so much love that either you cry or it hurts 
So with no further ado, I am going to share screen, up host disabled participant screen sharing. So we do need our host to do something special with us, turn us into a special co-host over here. Try to see if that works. I can have a co-host now. And that should work. There it is. I made it in this hot pink, so I would actually see it on my on my screen when I did this. Okay. Give me a second slideshow. Play from the start. Good. Sweet. Thank you, Kathy. So we are going to step into love, which to me is really stepping into the happiness factor. And to me, the state of love, the state of happiness is that which makes your heart sing, is that which makes you leap out of bed, ready to soar, ready to, as I said, fly over tall buildings in a single bound, but more important than that, ready to do you, ready to share your wisdom, your truth, your work, your heart. So when we step into love, there is only love because we're going to be talking about love as a state of consciousness, a very st special state of consciousness because love can heal all wounds. Love can heal. Love can heal. Love can heal your illness, your heart, and all sorts of things in between. Okay, so love we've established is our happiness factor. And love is a state of being. And in a few moments, I'll show you what that means. We can't be in love or experience love if we're in misery. So if we're feeling depressed, or if we're feeling less than, or victimized, or isolated, or lonely, we're not experiencing that, quote, ecstatic state of being. So I want to define love as being in that state of being like a 10. It's that state of turned on passion, turned on enthusiasm, turned on excitement. Now, not everyone leaps up and down like I do. I guess I have that kind of personality. In fact, I was told I was going to be a spiritual comedian. Sometimes I think I have that quality, but not everyone you know, is on fire. Some people experience a very high state of love in a quiet way, where they're quiet and reserved. And yet when you're with them, you can sense that love, you can sense that higher state of being, you can sense that they have that inner power. So in some people, we can experience that love as a high state of vibration, and we can experience it without them even saying a word. And how is that possible? Because their frequency, and that word frequency is so important because what is love but a frequency? So that will resonate. So here's the truth. And it was so funny because when we hopped on, uh, you know, I heard- Hello. Hello, am I live on Zoom? You are, yes, I'm I can see Zoom. you. I haven't been on Zoom for a while. Yes, you are live on Zoom, hun. Can you shut your sound off for a few minutes while I share what puts us in a state of happiness? And you being here puts us in a definite state of happiness. So contemplate, guys, the things that put you in that state of happiness. Now, one of the things, and the most important thing for me, is when I'm doing my work, I'm literally in a state of happiness. In fact, when I teach people how to live your life purpose, oftentimes, well, you know, our life purpose is that which we're going to do, whether we get paid or not. It's that thing that puts you into that state of happiness. So your life purpose and the state of happiness are one of the th same. So this picture was taken last Saturday at the Total Disclosure Festival in Los Angeles. It happens every single year. And Alan Steinfeld, who is the master of contact and disclosure had invited me up on the stage to discuss one of my recent contact experiences. It was not a contact with the angelic ones, which I have had, but it was a contact with the extraterrestrials. 
Sitting behind me, though you can't see, but you can see her feet, is Victoria Reynolds of Fearless and Free. And we have Ellen Steinfeld on the right. So my state of happiness is when I'm sharing my wisdom, sharing, uh, teaching, doing classes, doing readings, doing soul awakening, doing anything that reminds us of who we are, just so you know. Now, oh yeah, so now is the point where I actually tell you what happened. <sighs> All right, well, take a deep breath, Joan. So last week, the week before, I was invited to a plant medicine journey weekend. And it was a, a cannabis plant medicine weekend. And the girls were not as what I'd say in the same necessarily frequency of when we talk about extraterrestrials, we talk about our star family, and we always call them in a loving way. Well, they're our star family. We're star seeds, we're Andromedas. We're... Well, so I'm at this event and I had connected with this medium. And actually I was very shy and I was gonna leave, but she came up to me, this beautiful medium, and she said, Joan, can you call in aliens? Well, from the moment she said the word aliens, and actually I'm gonna share this other picture we're gonna look at while I'm telling you the story. So when she said the word aliens, I kind of freaked out because I don't use that word. And that word reminds me of a lower energy. It's not the energy of love, right? So I very quickly realized, so she said, can you call in? aliens well to be act perfectly honest i didn't know if i could call in aliens i know i can call in angelic ones i know that i have seen extraterrestrial beings and i've seen the star beings did i actually know i could go out in the middle of the field and call them in well it hadn't happened yet didn't mean it wouldn't happen right so i said yes my guide said say yes john say yes so i i go out and I and I go up and you have to understand this is a Saturday night in Joshua Tree. Now Joshua Tree is the home of many extraterrestrial sightings because Giant Rock is right there. They've been having sightings in Giant Rock for a thousand years. In fact, the shamans had actually isolated Giant Rock so that normal people couldn't even go there for thousands of years because that's where they communed with the extraterrestrials. And giant rock was just a scot, you know, over the next hill. So I'm in this field and I'm in the, the vortex of the extraterrestrial field. I can feel it. I'm under the UFO highway, which goes all the way out through, through Arizona. And I was on the same ley lines as the Egyptian pyramids. So I could really feel the energy. Meanwhile, it's a party environment. There's rock and roll up there hard rock, whatever it was. And um, the girls are up there doing their thing. Didn't want to interrupt with that. All I wanted, I you know, shouted, can you shut it off? So the extraterrestrial star beings can hear us. That's what I said. And from that moment on, I went in the center of the room, a uh, center of the field rather, and a very unique energy descended upon me. And I knew that they were coming. So I was in the center of a circle. There were 12 women that circled around me. I did not know how many women there were. I was in another place. And I began to share with them the history of the valley there or the mountaintop there, the history of the extraterrestrials and what their presence signified for humanity. And I did a process I do all the time with people. You can hear it on Miracle Monday in particular, we send our roots down to the center of the earth. And then we sent our antenna up to the heavens. And as we send our antenna up to the heavens, and we connect with those cosmic rays, those cosmic energies, my guides were prompting me to share with them that we should pull ourselves out of our bodies. And so we pulled ourselves out of the bodies. And the guide said, look, if you can match us in height up there, if you can raise your vibratory frequency of your tribe to as high as ours, and you can literally uh, astral travel them all the way out of their body up to where we are, we have a match. And so I just did what they were telling me to do, called them in, 
I felt like I was being really charged up and I closed my eyes. I suddenly ran out of things to say, right? And my antenna is up to the heavens. I can see everyone's antenna is up there. My eyes are closed. And then I hear a voice that says, open your eyes. And I think to myself, it's way too soon. I mean, it was under 10 minutes, guys. And I hear another voice that says, open your eyes. But they say, open your eyes and look up. I was, maybe the first voice was look up, then open your eyes. Open your eyes, look up. And so I found myself, I couldn't help myself. And I didn't want to, because how would I know that it was, you know, I didn't know. So I shouted out to everyone, open your eyes, look up. Simultaneously, the 12 women surrounding me and all the women on the balcony there, everyone looked up. And at first, it looked like a shooting star because it came right out of that mountain. And then they must have seen us or they must have felt that energy or maybe, maybe, maybe we were all energetically up there and like we were an energy and they they stopped. They literally stopped overhead and, and north of us and they twinkled and cosmic rays, they, they twinkled as if they were winking at us to let us know that they were there. And then glittered gold and flew off into the cosmos. So were we stunned and amazed? Absolutely, I was stunned, I was amazed, I was awed, I was off the chart in happiness and many things happened after that. So what happened? First of all, we all got together and we decoded it. And it turned out there were exactly 12 women around me. Other women had gotten a hit to go, but then as they stood up, they heard a voice that said, no, you're not to be a part of it. Now, the reason this is important, talk about love, is that Kathy Mason, 18 months before, had done a reading for me in which she said, Joan, you're not connected to your 14th dimensional being who wants to connect with you. And so there's going to be some kind of ceremony. 12 women has to be 12 and you're going to be in the center and something's going to light up and you're going to be on fire and you will be that connected and that connection is going to happen. Now, when she told me that a few half an hour later, this beautiful woman, Celine, came over to do an interview with me. I was interviewing her on my 420 show and she was coming over. So she was early so we can get to know each other. And I told her about that reading and she looks at me in the eye. She says, Joan, I think you're going to do it on my property. Don't ask me why. Well, I kind of panicked because now I'm thinking, oh, God, I'm going to have to describe it as an event and what is going on and uh, what am I supposed to do in that circle? Well, you know how the mind can really ruin a lot. So fast forward. You know, every so often I think of this 14th dimensional being and I try to connect and you know things only happen when they're meant to happen, right? So I found out afterwards that there were exactly 12 women and that each of us was activated in our own way, but my DNA got, so what happened for me was they cut out some sad places in my DNA and they inserted this cosmic ray right in my DNA and I could feel it. And so did the 12 women who were in the circle. The other women felt it, but not as much. And it, one of the downloads that came to me was that the reason this was a kind of a rock and roll, you know, marijuana smoking group with a lot of witnesses now was because they wanted this to get into all the populations. It's not just us who are spiritual and conscious who are the contactees. There's other people being woken up. You know, it's more than just the, the light worker tribe. And these women were genuinely completely impacted. Me, I was on a high, unbelievable, because I could feel the resonance. I, I could just feel it. And as a matter of fact, the next day, I did my Miracle Monday, and I was literally on fire with the energy of it. And miracles happen. So fast forward, I was invited to share my story, the Disclosure Festival, and so I did. I'm on the stage and and Alan does a guided meditation to call in your star being 
and I had kind of thought who contacted us, but I didn't have a visual. So in this meditation now, I'm on the stage, I had just done the, my own guide, I can see this tall gray. Now, it was an old gray, and probably about 16 feet tall. And up until then, I had seen him before, and he was all head and eyes, and almost no body, and he terrified me. So I didn't want to see him, and I said to him, you have to leave, you have to leave. I was terrified of him. But I'm on the stage, maybe Alan's protecting me, who knows, but I see him in my vision, and for the first time I said, you are welcome here. And I realized I wasn't afraid of him at all. And I felt their energy. I felt the presence of the tall whites. Well, he was, he was literally a tall white gray being. So he was, a, he was a tall gray, an ancient soul gray. But then with time, he also merged with the tall whites. And as you can see, I have a, an empathy and a relationship with the tall whites. I'm an ambassador. Well, he's the ambassador. I just carry him around. It gives me instructions. But the beings that came to me a day or two later when I when I was just channeling, it was like, who did I see? Well, this was the tall white being that first came and who kind of shifted in color from dark to white, but came to embrace me literally. And when my fear had left, because I had no fear then, you can see that first of all there's fire in their eyes, there's compassion, there was a real desire for me to be able to be in their presence and not be fearful. And so the next image was this one. And I feel she's in an Andromedan. I thought at first she was an Arcturian, but she's an Andromedan. And you can feel the energy of, of love that is in, in the third eye. And in her eyes, you can see in that reflection all you and, and I hear the Beatles song, all you see is love. You know, all you feel is love. And that is their message to us. So when I began painting angels years ago in 2013, I was guided to not only paint, but I went, to, I was in plant medicine journeys at that time. And in the plant medicine journey, the second time, I saw writing on several people's head. Now, I wanted to be a recorder, you know, I couldn't, but when I got home that night, I shared exactly what I had seen, kind of verbally, that I'd seen this writing, it was Sumerian text, with my roommate who was a remote viewer. My remote viewer friend, in about a half an hour, literally transcribed the writing and also transcribed the message. And the extraterrestrials were calling us. They, they were calling for a meeting of heaven and earth so they could let us know how much they loved us and so that humanity could learn to raise their vibrational frequency to connect. So how do we raise our vibrational frequency? I'm so glad you asked, my friends. We raise our vibrational frequency by the power of love because we know that the power of love can actually take us to the highest of vibrational frequency that, just like avatars of old, can heal thousands and thousands of people in our energy field. If each of you on our Zoom chat had our, our screens open and we were holding up this light and we were shining it out around the world and beaming, we would raise the energetic frequency of love around the planet and the galaxy. And earthlings, even though they may not have that understanding, earthlings are very involved in love. And these are all the words, you know, I was looking at how do we raise our frequency? Well, one way we raise our frequency is by sharing love. And there's so many ways, 104 different languages of love. I can't pronounce it. Wuani, je t'aime, te amo, ishli bindais. Now, 
you know, these words have a frequency encoded in a love vibration, which is why I'm sharing them with you tonight. We have other words for love, and each of these words are encoded with high frequency energy so that our words have, you know, we talk about, okay, negative words or positive words. Well, negative words actually have a low energy vibration. Our positive words have a very high energetic vibration. So even words like I have deep affection, I am fond, I am tender, warmth, in intimacy, attachment, endearment, devotion, adoration, idolization, worship, passion, ardor, desire. Now, some of these words have lower energy, desire, lust, the yearning, infatuation, adulation, besottedness. So you can kind of see that there's different ranges of vibration for the very word itself, by the way. So if we were to take out a pendulum, say, and measure the vibrational frequency of all these words, we can find the words that would be the highest of vibrational frequency for love. And it isn't infatuation, they just told me, but, but these are other words that we might use. So when you're using the word love or any of these words ask to be shown the highest of vibrational frequencies when you're sharing it. Okay, now even the Greeks had seven different words for love. That's how important love is. Love meaning making the world go round. And we have romantic, passionate love. We have intimate, authentic friendship. We have playful, flirtatious love. I'm getting excited just talking about this. And by the way, if you are calling in your twin flame, you are calling in your soulmate. This is a perfect webinar for you to be looking at tonight. So unconditional familiar love. I have two children that I adore, that I love. I love their father, who I'm no longer with, for helping to bring in these two children and for being part of a, of a family unit that, that gave them that unconditional love, compassionate self-love. Now, of all these loves, the one I want to share with you the most right now is that compassionate self-love for a minute, because, you know, when we say we love someone else, in truth, you're only capable of loving another as much as you're capable of loving yourself. So if your life is all about giving to everyone else, but not giving to yourself, rather you're draining your own energy, then the love you're sharing isn't at the highest of the vibrational frequencies. It's a little bit lower and it comes with strings attached. So loving ourselves first, like when you're on an airplane, God forbid, you know, low oxygen and the masks come down. You do not put the, the mask on, on your kid first. You put it on yourself because it's important to raise your oxygen level first so you can then be present to raise it for someone else. And, then we, and that is true for love too. We must put on our own oxygen mask. We must, we must you know, do those, those um, emergency things on our heart. We must pump it. You know, we must get it in motion. We must stir it. We must vibrate it. We must tingle it. But we have to tingle it from the inside out. And that way, when we're sharing love, when we're telling people we love them, they authentically can receive it because it comes from a high place. So then there is also committed love with a companion or empathetic universal love, agape. What a beautiful word. And that agape, by the way, has that highest of frequencies. Agape, emp empathetic, universal love. Are we capable of, of universal love? Yes. The Native Americans, in fact, I didn't discover this till I was painting. I discovered several of my paintings that I was channeling had two hearts. It had an inner heart and an outer heart. And I knew that because the guides told me inner heart, outer heart, your inner heart to heal yourself, to give you the fire that you need to source and nurture the outer heart for the world, 
and they're actually two distinct parts. So I discovered that, and that is a Native American tradition. We need that outer heart and that inner heart. So there's other ways. So I really want you to look at some of these other words and see how they land with you. You know, new words to say, I love you, cherish. I cherish my time with all of you tonight because I'm living my sole purpose by sharing this with you. I value my time with you and I value and cherish that you're cherishing me and, and you know, the Unity Week and the co-creators that you, you share your precious time. We value that, we're devoted. I value the devotion. I have faith in you, I believe in you, I'm committed to you. I consider you when I think about things that are going on in my life. I respect your opinion. And our respect and love the same? They're on a similar, a similar vibration leading to loving, okay? Leading to acknowledging the love within. One of the ways we can acknowledge that love is through respect, through commitment, and even through lust. Okay, running my pendulum, when I ask my pendulum, show me the energetic vibration of the word lust on a scale of one to 10. And that is kind of funny. It's kind of like a five. But then I, I got, I saw a few scenes of lust that they showed me were actually of higher vibrational frequency. I should probably share, it was on Outlander. There was one, one scene that was probably the most romantic scene I've ever seen in my life, lustful romantic. And they just showed me that as a sample of how that could be a higher frequency. And even my pendulum's excited. And I adore you. I'm giddy with excitement. I treasure my time. I love our intimacy. And yes, there's different kinds of love. Now, let's say, you know, we are fifth dimensional beings, guys, in three dimensional worlds here. So when I say this, this is, you know, the three dimensional unconditional loving, infatuation, the beginning when you just, you know, falling in love, commitment, accepting, and then there's short term versus long term love. And then dependence and stability. So we're talking about now moving us into spiritual love for a few minutes, because really that is the highest vibration of frequency. All of you I know on the chat who are doing this light worker work, which is not work to a light worker because it's what you came here to do. It is what we do because we're rooted in this spiritual love. And so these spiritual love connections, like Kathy, I adore her to the moon and back. I've never met her, but to get in person, but together we collaborate on the highest of vibrational frequencies. And when we collaborate, we can feel that love. So this spiritual love serves such a purpose for us that it leads us to places that maybe our fear would never take us. It helps us be greater than ourselves because I am steeped in this love and because I love all of you so much and myself and committed to share my heart now, my work, my inner resources, my strength. That's where it comes from. And by the way, this is really 3D, but how do you know that you're in spiritual kind of love? You know, you, you just know someone forever. You've known them forever or you say things at the same time, or the same thing happens. Um, I was talking to one of my dear clients and friends that I adore. We both had the same experiences. So it's like same kinds of things. So spiritual love, really a way of noticing it is that you're reliving past lives. You have deja vu, you know about it. Now I wanna look at this for a second so you can actually see why love like love is only 500 however i do believe when you raise your frequency to the highest consciousness of love the enlightenment of love and you actually spread love you can move up into the enlightened lover that's what we're going to call you the conscious enlightened lover but look what happens how first of all we begin with some of these very heavy emotions and, you know, here we are talking about love, which is a really high vibration. And just to put your attention on one of these lower ones, you can feel that that resonance is very 
heavy. So people in this lower 200 cannot feel these higher vibrations of love, these higher vibrations of enlightenment. And, you know, the first thing they feel is courage and then neutrality. So I, I chose this little chart because look at the emotional life view that people have when you're in the lower vibration. So hopefully you'll never go there again. Um, even, you know, desire, disappointing, apathy, hopelessness. Now, much of the planet is in hopelessness. A lot is going on to cause humanity to be in fear, to be in this frequency of hopelessness, to be feeling tragic, to feel like they're in that repeating cycle over and over and over and over again, that, like that movie years ago, where every Groundhog's Day, where every day woke up to the same thing. Humanity is coming out of a deep, dark shadow. And if we learn how to stand in our truth of higher consciousness and become radiant light bearers that project out the light, then we will be able to activate the Ascension timelines. But I'm gonna tell you that right now, all hands on deck, that which you've been called to do is that which you are being asked to do because so much of the planet is in that state of hopelessness. So what happens to us when we share these energetic vibrations of love and we use those words, even if they're the not, not the top ones, that when we stir the pot of vibrations of love, look what happens. Our own energy radiant around us and it trickles out that's not even a trickle it leaps out and leaps and bounds and circles and abounds creating miracle miracles upon miracles of peace harmony love healing wellness opportunities synchronicities and certainly you're catching your miracle wave what happens when we meet our twin flame and we activate that twin flame energetics some people are in a Merkaba of the heart, the heart love Merkaba of the most enlightened energies, because when you are in that cosmic energy of the of of Tantra, when you're using that quote lust, raising your frequency to connect with the divine, and notice how their antennas are actually literally connecting, that consciousness will awaken millions of souls who've been waiting for the two of you to come together. And you can also generate that coming from your own heart, from the central sun inside your heart, becoming, as I said, a radiant light being, a radiant projector being. So what are those spiritual aspects of love? We're in a fifth dimensional consciousness of absolute reality. And we strive to be there 24-7. We are in supreme consciousness. We know we're connected to that source being. Our innate intelligence is connected and turned on. We are the source of everything. We know who we are. And we have that radiance coming from out, from without, from within, without. Radical unity, pure beingness present everywhere and in everything. The day I was named Joan of Angels, that's exactly how I felt in and everything. The human side of this is different. It's a lower vibrational frequency. Be aware of that. Step outside and say, I prefer to be in this higher vibration of love and practices a, make it a practice of sadhana so that we have love as a practice and create that energy. So what is that source of our love, of our loving heart and how to connect? Practice awareness, practice that source of consciousness, um, knowing that that's, it is a lie that we're separate. So I did say that we're in a heavy time and, and that heavy time is, is creating divisiveness and separation in humanity. When you connect to the source of love, you know that there's only unity. You know that our hearts beat together as one when you become committed to unity consciousness, unifying consciousness and the consciousness of love. This consciousness of love helps heal division, helps heal that feeling of separation that right now 
is, is what they are trying to create on planet Earth. So I say to you, use these tools to connect to the source of love within you. And how do we do it? We can close our eyes. We can imagine we are sitting in the center of this vast flow of love. And love is flowing all around us. Like a, we're like a gentle wind. So keep imagining, guys, that it is flowing all around you. Become that consciousness of love. Know that you are that statement of love. You know, when Kathy and I hopped on and Kathy was saying, well, I'm wearing this crown, you know, because Joan's wearing her, she's wearing this crown because she knows that she is making that statement of connecting with the divine, just like I am and each of you are. So I say, get your crown, connect to the divine now and, and love yourself. Okay, every action is not designed to assert that you love everyone and everyone love you because you are love, okay? You are just designed that way. You are love. Just become love. Don't design anything. Like, had I tried to design that ceremony, it wouldn't have worked. So love is an act of will. It's a conscious decision to do what is best for other people on the human plane. It says, let's take our emotions out of it. Let's choose the vibration of whom we love. So one of my friends was sad today. They said that, you know, someone else broke up with them. And I said, this is cause to, se to celebrate because that person wasn't at your vibrational frequency. And now you can make that conscious choice to choose a person that is at your vibrational frequency. So there you have it. So guys, what do I do with, with humanity? I help awaken your soul. I help you step into your miraculous life. I help you hear your heart sing, which is love. I help you let go of that which is keeping you. I help you release that which is keeping you and that which has stood in your way, not just this lifetime, but for lifetime, so that we can then clear and activate your DNA. And they showed me the other day how to do that even deeper and awaken light codes. And on that note, I suggest you know join me on Miracle Mondays at 5 p.m. Pacific because we're, we're awakening these light codes now. So yes, Soul Awakening Sessions, I'd love to work with you. If you go to my website, you can get a free ebook on how to live your soulful purpose and wake up every day leaping over tall buildings in a single bound, the angel way. And that even rhymes. So I'm gonna take a deep breath, see if there's any questions and go from there. Great, thank you, thank you. Okay, so um, I think that there are a few questions. One of the things I wanted to say is I wanted to um, let people know that when you say you're connecting with your higher dimensional self, that that's actually a, a it's almost like a, um, demand of the universe to let your aspect into this physical realm. So you have access to the vision and the expression and the um, superpowers <laughs> of that higher dimensional aspect of yourself at any time. Now, it may take a little while to learn how to use that, that's all. Well, I'm gonna tell you that I couldn't have planned that ceremony, Kathy. <laughs> but I feel exactly what happened. And it is amazing to me, the energy has shifted for me. And already the energy that's coming through me and the, the vibration is very powerful, as evidenced by that artwork as well, and bringing them present into the physical, because they want us to, they want humanity to know who they are. They don't want us to be afraid of them. They want us to be, you know, there are, allies in co-creating these higher consciousness. So meet Avon, all white ambassador. <laughs> That's so cool. So um, I think someone's coming in right now um, at the very end. So my friend Sean is coming in. So um, it, uh, let's see. The... I see a few questions. Okay. Or comments. So you know, it, it is on lust. And I think this is great. I'm so glad you commented on it. 
It is my understanding love and lust are not equivalent. You are saying the frequency is different. Yes, the frequency is very, very, very different. Lust itself focuses on, say, the lower frequency of, of your genitals, of sex, of, of however. We will also say that certain, you know, dependent on the partner, you know, and if you're truly in love with a partner, which can happen also, then it raises that vibration higher. And if you're going with the energy of Tantra, which would raise the energy even higher, and, and it accentuates that kind of, now we're using lust, but we're using it in a lusty way that's describing more the passion, but you've raised your higher consciousness with it, you can go in that direction. That's all I can say. But, you know, I use a pendulum a lot, and I'm gonna be teaching a pendulum class soon. The purpose of your pendulum is to help you really see the energy of your, the frequency of things. It's a must have tool to, for discernment. So that was a really good question. Uh, and so I wanna comment on something else, which is great. I shaved my hair and I love it. No more hair piece for me, I love the freedom of it. So I want you to really, Siobhan, kind of tingle up and love on your scalp. One of the things we also know about hair is that, and the Native Americans have said this, is that our hair is the seat of our intuition and that our hair brings in the energy from the divine. Now, that doesn't mean that hair, people without hair can't connect because you obviously have other ways of connecting. But for many of people, that's why also the hair on your arm stands up when your gut, you know, registers terror or, you know, like, or your hair stands up when you hear truth. So you're, that's an intuitive sense and a gift. So the free, I can understand the freedom of it as well. I'm very proud of you. And, you know, what can I say? Ah, crown of creation, but you can still wear a crown on any head. And, you know, we have our crown chakra, whether we allow people to see it or not. Right, right. So Joan, did you get a feeling from the disclosure event that um, more and more people are being activated at the higher levels like you have been? I, I can feel it, Kathy. You know, when I do my Miracle Monday every week, we, we raise up a tower of miracle power. And I realized that that's like the light body. We're, we're really raising it up. And I started asking where everyone's from so we could connect it like a needle and a thread, you know, so that all the light towers around the planet, and I'm sharing this with you guys, so you too can do this, but we connect it. And then, and then we sprinkle love dust down to the planet, but we become like projectors. And so what I realized is that this crown allows us to receive light and then build it up in our body. So like that last slide I showed of projecting it out, but we, from the higher levels too, we can be light projectors. Can you imagine that? That's a, that's a very positive thing to envision where um, everyone's self-actualized enough to wanting to knowing we're all the same. We're all, that's the next step to unity and oneness. Yes, yeah, so I, I'm so happy to share this all with you guys because the, the DNA activations and upgrades that I got from connection with, with, the, with the ETs and then the download of the Andromedan and she told me that she's really the, the embodiment of the 14th dimensional being. So all this has to do with Kathy in a certain way, because I wouldn't have actually known what was happening without. So I have to tell you, thank you for that. But that she is that 14th dimensional being that is actually coming through me. And, and it's almost 24 seven. Yes. So extremely exciting. So being activated, angelic activations, DNA activations, light body, extraterrestrials are very important for all of us now. Love activations. Tonight was a love activation. Yes, it was. A love activation. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Are there any other questions um, from the field here? 
Or, um, uh, Joan, is there anything else that you would like to share so that people, yeah, I put it in there too, um, that people know what, how you could help them? Because um, you can help them in so many ways. You do these free shows and you do help people during them, them but they also can get one-on-ones from you. You teach classes. Could you talk a little bit about all the ways yeah. that people could work with you? Yes, you can work with me. We've probably worked with you, me, many of you in past lives too. I'm here to help you remember why you're here because we all came down with a mission and purpose to be here right now during these crazy times and you actually have an assignment. It's literally on a clipboard if you can access it. And that's what I do in a nutshell. I help you access your superpowers. I help you remember your connection to the divine. I help you remember your purpose and help you let go of things that don't serve you. So we clear up relationships. We clear up confusion. We clear up, you know, we you learn how to discern where it is you go. And so I offer that as soul awakening sessions or I coach people long term to help you go step by step by step to mastering your destiny. And I have several classes on the, my website too. So if you go to the website, you can get a free ebook on how to live your soul filled purpose, but you could also take a class on how to connect to your angels, which is a really good class, a good one to follow this one. And there's a few other classes too. How to live intuition. Your intuition. Yeah. Uh, but, but I also, every Monday night, I do a show 5 p.m. Pacific and it's getting stronger now after my awakening my last awakening last week I can tell that the power the healings are changing on Miracle Monday and I'm now bringing in light codes and DNA activation so a lot of healing is happening on Miracle Monday and people must feel it because we tripled our numbers in three days on Miracle Monday so show up on Miracle Monday on my YouTube channel. I periodically do readings twice a month on, on my YouTube channel. I'm doing ancient history things. So those are the, when I share my gifts because I love you all so much. But feel free to reach out and have a reading. I think you'll love it. I think you'll, you'll, and I've been doing readings ever since I was born, just because that's my nature Wonderful. and my purpose. Well, thank you so much. This has been fantastic, and um, I'm so so impressed with your with your uh, slideshow. Oh, <laughs> that was beautiful. I I was a little surprised, you know, that my guides wanted me to do it as a slideshow, and Good. and then I then when I reviewed it today, and then I found those other slides on consciousness. It all fit together. It's beautiful. It's fantastic. Thank you so oh, much. You asked for something beautiful on love. <laughs> yes, I, that was what Mason Works Marketing wanted to put love is the way as part of our theme for uh, co-creators global village. And Joan, you just knocked it out of the park. You just did a beautiful job. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you very yeah, much. I love you too. So yeah. You're a big part of my yeah. story tonight too. <laughs> oh, thank you. And um, Kath, um, this is not the end of the conference. It's just the end of today. There's still more, more, more for the next day. And um, go, there's a Trello board. You can go and review what's going on. And you can also go to a website and sign up and get the schedule at Peace of creation.com. So it's one o'clock in the UK to answer that question. Oh. 5 p.m. Pacific is 1 a.m. You too, uh, you know, but okay. but all healing happens before, during, and after. And healing actually starts now if that's if that's your intention. So everything is at Joan of Angels, so you cannot confuse me or lose me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Joan. So I'm going to, um, we're going to sign off now. Thank you. Bless you.